It's a good afternoon to the Church of the Living God. <laughs> Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body with a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Shall we pray? To our Lord, the Lord Jesus, our Lord, 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 we can pray to God whenever, wherever, and we don't need to kneel or be in a special position to talk to our Heavenly Father. Paul says in Hebrews 4 verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help the time of need. What a marvelous invitation we are getting from God. We are invited to come to His throne, His presence, at any room, at any time. Now that we are firm that God is always available, we ought to understand that He has the power to transform, to change our lives and situations. Second Corinthians 3 verse 16, she don't take us there. Verse 16, Nevertheless, it shall turn to thee. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and when the spirit of the Lord is, they is the Lord. But we all with open face, beholding in the grass of the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image, image from glory to glory, ever as that spirit of the Lord. Church, as we look and meet our Father in prayer, the Holy Spirit changes us into a glorious image, the image of Jesus Christ. A story is told of a certain man who owned a number of liquor stores. He began to construct a new liquor store to increase his business. The new store, unfortunately, was being built near a local church. The church members decided to start a campaign to block the bar from opening. They met for a prayer and fasting program to ask God to intercede for their behalf. Before the opening of the liquor store, there was a light spirit. Lightning struck the store. This right here, church, is the power of prayer. Whether we believe it or not, prayer does change things in our lives. Prayer can also be used as an approach to seek forgiveness and cleansing. First John 1 verse 9 tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Just like David, we have to take the bold step to come before the Lord and seek a clean heart. In so doing, we can be changed through the blood of Jesus Christ. Prayer also changes our attitude. Instead of looking at fellow sinners with the world with you, we are transformed to look at them and lift them up to God. When we surrender to God, we see life differently. And that is because our attitudes would have changed. We see a drug addict lying by the pavement, and rather than looking down on him, we should see a child of God in need of our help. We have confidence that God hears and answers prayers. We have had our times where we have prayed earnestly, but it seems like God does not hear us. Church, we tend to lack the confidence that John talks about in 1 John 5 verse 14. When we pray, we ought to trust that God knows the end from the beginning and will definitely give us the best answer. Prayer does renew our minds. We have to look at characters like Elisha. Elisha was surrounded by a Syrian army and instead of being afraid of it, Every post, he prayed to God to save him and to open their eyes and his servants from the Syrian army. And to their surprise, an invisible army of angels was seen surrounding the Syrians. God reveals his power because of our prayers. Church, when we pray with a heart submitted to God, he will act, and when we act, if in the storm in your life, he will be calm down. Even in difficult times, prayer can change us. Sometimes God must allow us to face tough situations, to go through the storm, just so we are able to understand that we need to in our lives. You know that those times in our lives when we actually keep saying, 
I got it, like, I have to all figure it out. But then God says, the moment that you actually say that, I got it, that's the moment that you realize, you start feeling like you're able to do things on your own. That is not right. We always need the presence of, the, of God in our lives. Be it in any situation that we are in or any decision that we have to make. This is why we end up being able to understand what Psalm 91 verse 24 says. He that dwelleth in the He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. I will be focusing on transformed by prayer through difficult times. Difficult times, storms, and tribulations come to us in different forms and in different stages in our lives according to whatever um, different levels of life that we are actually in. Let's take a look at Hannah. Back in her time, Hannah being a childless um, person, she was considered to be cursed. You know, as Penina continued to taunt Hannah, life became unbearable from time to time. Whenever circumstances furnished an opportunity for Penina to exalt herself at the expense of her rival, Penina, uh, of her rival, Penina would always and would gladly do so. Without a sweat, she would gladly piss off Hannah. The cause of this woman seems to Hannah a trial almost beyond endurance. Satan employed her as his agent to, um, to harass and if possible exasperate and destroy one of God's faithful children. Church, you know, as individuals, we go through our own times of trials and tribulations on a daily basis. And you know that just those feminists that come into our lives, coming in with all their different forms and anything that they have to say unto us, and they do whatever it's that they do whatever is what is in their power to um, try and kiss us off like they did to Hannah. But then Hannah prayed. She remembered Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And so Hannah prayed, and she called upon the Lord in her time of distress, and God answered her. Through this, Hannah was transformed. And if ever she had doubted God's power and strength, that all was already history to her, because a prophet was born through her. Let's go to the book of Esther. Esther 4, verse 18 to 17. Verse 18. Then Mordecai commanded to answer, Esther, did not prove thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall they and enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy brother's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth that whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return not the kindness answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat or drink, three days, night or day, I also am my maiden to fast my fast. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and he did according to all that they said to man. You know, church, I like the way Mordecai said. <laughs> And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? What if you were put in that position for such a time as this? What if you were brought to service for such a time as this? God is not done with you. He knows exactly what you have to do before you even step foot out of the service gate for good. For such a time as this. Esther was made queen. God knew that the people would need her the most and they would be delivered. God knew that it was going to, that there was going to come a time when the people of the, the Jews needed to be held. And God saw it fit that Esther became queen at such a time as that. As Esther's maidens prayed and fasted with her, 
they also became transformed and believed that there was a, that there is a living God in whom we can make miracles. You know, reading the book of Esther, you realize that Haman was hanged on the same gallows that he had prepared for the Jews. Tables turned, church. When you worship a living God, He can turn tables for you. He can open doors that don't make and close. He can finish the good work that He had already started with you. All you have to do is believe. And as you believe, have faith. And as you have faith, you pray. And as you pray, doors are open. Amen. Moving on, we'll be going on to the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 12, we find the story of two of Jesus' disciples, James and Peter. The story tells us that the church had a prayer meeting in the home of Mary and they were interceding so that uh, Peter could be released from prison. And God answered, God heard and answered their prayer. Um, he sent an angel to release Peter from prison and guide him safely to the home of Mary, where the believers were praying. The reaction of the believers when Martha the servant girl told them that Peter was at the gate is interesting and a bit unbelievable. The Bible says that Rhoda knew that it was Peter's voice, but when she told them, they doubted it. But when they made the ones were praying at the exact moment that Peter did but why doubt? Why is it always easy to give fear than it is to give faith to our prayers? It's always what if, what if. Here I can imagine they were praying and they were saying, what if he doesn't come out? And guess what? He came out. But when they realized that he was there, they didn't believe. That is faith in the wrong what if. This reminds me of the story that Sinta read, that Sinta shared at the beginning about the Nicholas story. When we pray, do we believe God will change? When we, when we pray, do we believe God will answer? And when God answers, do we believe He answered? Or do we try to figure out on to figure out a more complete and logical answer? Never really believing that God did it for us. Self-doubt. There's some doubt in our prayers. When we pray, we don't really say exactly what we want, but we leave a room of doubt. And this God is not able to do exactly what He says He's able to do. Do we resemble the different store owner who believed that the church member's prayers were reasonable for his store burning down? Or do we look or do we look like the church members who deny the prayers and anything to do with the store burning down? Each day when we wake up, do we wait until the child come our way so that we now have to start praying to God? Do we wait for a certain situation in our lives to have to open our eyes before we actually start communicating with God, having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our Father? The call from the book steps to Christ, page 99 is one that has a great impact in our lives. There is no time or place which is inappropriate to offer a petition to God. When Jesus was on planet Earth, he prayed more, many more times than anyone is ever said to have prayed in the Bible. And so how does Jesus, like, he, he had the power, like, an immortal being. How could he have prayed so many times and yet us, simple flesh, we, we, we fail to actually wake up and say, Dear God, thank you for the gift of life. Do we take things for granted? Or do we just say, Oh, it's a normal thing to get up every morning and to do my chores as usual? Think about it, church. There is no time or place which is, in which it is inappropriate to offer up a, pet a petition to God. There is nothing that can prevent us from lifting up our hearts in the spirit of earnest prayer, in the crowds, on the streets, in the midst of a business engagement, 
When we are all alone and feel rejected, we may send up a petition to God and plead for a divine guidance. As did Nehemiah, when we made his request before King Artaxerxes. God has promised us in you. What about you today? Are you ready to ask God to renew your heart, your mind, your life today? We all have regrets. We all wish there were things we had done or not said. Choices we had not made. In God's throne, there is room for a new beginning. If you are yearning for God to change your life, I will ask you to stand where you are as we pray. To our men and heavenly Father, we come the first to the Mighty Father this afternoon. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. For gathering us here, dear God, in your house, to be able to commune and talk to you as you speak to us in many different ways, through the news, through the pitch, through the preachers, and just as we talk to each other in shape lives. Dear Father, that to come further than we must ask him that you may be with us during the course of the day. Father, we also like to pray that you may speak to us in ways that no one can be able to understand, Father. Transform us, Father, and may our lives show a difference, dear God, to show that we are your children, dear Father, and you are guiding us. Father, may you please open doors for each and every one of us according to their own will, dear God, according to uh, their own request, dear Father. May you please intercede, Father, on our behalf and help us, dear God, to always trust and believe that you are with us. Help us, Father, to have a stronger connection with you day by day. And when the soon and when you come, Father, may our needs be eaten in the course of life. In your mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.